hello guys you're welcome to my channel you're welcome back to my channel hope you're good hope you're doing well so today we'll be looking on how to cut and sew a simple kimono jacket with a perfect inseam finishing so if you want to see how this was made keep watching this video and if you find this video very interesting don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to my channel what are you still waiting for please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video and if you have subscribed thank you for subscribing i love you thanks for your support thanks thank you so guys let's get started okay guys to start with you'll be needing your fabric as you can see here i'm making use of an african print fabric yeah and and it's beautiful so you'll be making use of your fabric so i'm trying to check if the the length of the fabric is will be enough for the length of my kimono jacket as you can see it will be enough so what i did is to cut out the length of what i wanted with my hip measurement did you see it i i cut out the length of what i'll be using with my with one quarter of my hip measurement so i placed the two fabric together like the front and the back piece together because i want to cut it once but if you don't want to cut yours once you can cut the front differently and the back differently by deciding to place the two uh, the two together so and what I have, the width of what I have is one quarter of my hip measurement plus three inches. So it's optional. So that's what I have here. So what I will be doing now is to take the width of the neckline of my kimono jacket. And the width of what I'll be taking is three inches. The width of what I took there is 3 inches. Then I will take my shoulder measurements. So, um, I will take half of my shoulder measurement. And from there, I will take my armhole measurement. But because it's going to be a sleeveless kimono jacket, I will reduce my armhole by 1 inch. So, I have 8 inches. So, I will reduce by 1 inch making it seven inches then i'll add one inch for my shoulder slope the reason why i reduce this because i don't want my restitute at that region so i always do that for a sleeveless dress whenever i'm drafting sleeveless dress or blouse i usually shorten my armhole by one inch don't bother it will not affect your your armhole it won't affect it since it's a sleeveless dress so i will take my shoulder slope so taking my shoulder slope and from there for the neck like the neck climb of the front uh, is going to be three inches that is the depth the depth of the neck climb for the front is going to be three inches and the depth of the neckline for the back will be one inch so don't be confused one inch which is the basic and the standard so my neckline is one and um, three inches for the front and one inch for the back so i've drawn the front and the back neckline so let me just connect it so if you if you will get confused doing the both together the front and the back together 
is advisable you do them separate. So from my shoulder, I will take my waist measurement, which is 15 inches. I'll take my waist measurement, then I'll connect it. That is from shoulder to waist. Then I'll also take my hip line. So from my shoulder, I took, sorry, from my waistline, I took seven inches, which is my hip depth. I'm sorry, the camera cut it off. I'll show you. So this is it from my, my waistline to the hip is seven inches. So that's what I did, which is 22 inches in total. So I'll take the length of my kimono jacket. I'll take the length of what I wanted for the kimono jacket and I'll add 2 inches for the hemming allowance. 2 inches for the hemming allowance. I left 2 inches for the hemming allowance. So when I'm done, I will connect my armhole. So find the midpoint of your armhole and come in by 3 quarter of an inch. Then connect it like this. So it's actually simple. So I'll take one quarter of my first measurement and I added one inch for the ease for um for the freeness because it's going to be um a free jacket. So I added one inch to it up aside the sewing allowance, then I added another one inch for the sewing allowance so what i added together is two inches but why sewing i will make use of the one inch for the sewing allowance the reason why i added the one inch is that i don't want my my jacket to be fitted since it's gonna be a free jacket so i added one inch at the burst line yeah i added one inch then plus my one inch for joining um, for sewing the seam allowance one inch for the seam allowance so at my waistline I took one quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the freeness and also one inch for the seam allowance so I still added extra one inch at the waistline is actually optional if you want yours to be fitted, no need of adding the one inch there. But I don't want mine to be fitted. So at my hip line, I took one quarter of my hip measurement, added one inch to it, and also added one inch for the same allowance. So I hope you're not confused. So that is what I did. So but we can decide not to add yours. Can decide to just make use of your exact measurement with your seam allowance is actually optional. So I'm trying to connect it. I connected it wrongly, so that's what I'm cleaning. So for the hemming part, for the hemming part, you can decide to bring down what um bring down your hip measurement to the hemming part you can decide to add something to it so what i will be doing is that what i took at the hip line is what i will still take at my hemming um the down part of my jacket you can decide to add one inch extra you can decide to reduce by one inch it all depends on you so the choice is yours so I just brought down everything I have at the hip line to the hemming line. So this is my 2 inches. I will fold it in while cutting on lining. I won't be cutting the 2 inches on lining. So let's continue. So, so what I will be doing now is to... Add um, half inch to it. 
half inch that will serve as the joining so that's what i did i tried to add it so with my scissors i will first of all cut out the back part i will first of all cut out the back part then let me draw the armhole for the back part too this armhole is for the back part like i said if this will confuse you cut it separately or if not you can still do it like this so what i will do now is to cut out the back first not the front first the back first so i will cut out the back first did you see what i did then i'll cut the remaining side the side seam so i'll cut it out i'm sorry i'll just cut out the the side so i'll just cut it out so like you can see the kimono jacket is actually simple to make it's not really difficult it's very simple to make so what I will do now is to remove the back part and cut out the front part. Please, I'll cut the front part now. And I'll also cut out the armhole for the front. Just like this. So what I'll be doing now, I'll put it together. So I want to... So I want to shorten the shoulder by one inch since it's, I, I won't be attaching any sleeve to it. So I will shorten it by one inch. It's actually good you do this so that that shoulder part won't be coming out or falling. So I actually like doing it. I took one inch. From the shoulder and connected it back to the armhole so i'll be cutting it out you can take up to two inches if you want it's actually good when you're making a sleeveless top or dress if you always do this because it will really help you so i shorten it by one inch i took one inch then connected it back to the armhole so i'm cutting it out because i don't want it to come like fall out on that armhole region i don't really know how to just i wish i have something like that to show you so i shorten by one inch note you can shorten by 1.5 or 2 inches so it's now time to cut on my lining so this is the lining I'm making use of. So I've folded my fabric. Um, I've placed my fabric on the lining. So I've placed it on the lining to cut it out. So I'm cutting the other thing apart from the aiming part did you see it i folded in the two inches before cutting out my lining i also did it for the back part too did you see it i folded the aiming um this and all of them are on fold so what i will do now is to open up the front part since it's going to be an um a jacket so we need to open it up at the front so from the center front, um, I'm opening the center front, so that's what I'm doing now. I'll open the fabric too and also the lining. So you open it up like this. Just follow it carefully, you will understand it. Did you see what I did? So I'm trying to open up the fabric part also. 
trying to open it up also so what I will do next is to shorten my lining at the center front I will shorten my lining by half an inch so that when I sew it the lining won't be coming out on the fabric at the center front so I will shorten it by half an inch so that is what I'm doing now oh sorry I'm actually shorting it by quarter of an inch that is 0 0.25 but you can as well shorten it up by half an inch too so that is what I did now so the next step is to place your fabric this is the back part so I'll place the front part also the right side facing facing each other the right side facing each other so that is what I will do now I'll place the left side and the right side too like this make sure the armhole matches each other and the shoulder too you just see that so I'll pin it down always work with your pin it will really help you a lot so I'll pin it down before sewing it so use your pin to pin it down do you see that so that is what I will do now to pin it down then I will sew it by one inch which is the same allowance then I will place the second part like this too i'm actually taking my time so that you understand what i'm doing here so you pin the shoulder two together like this in the armhole so if as a beginner or even as a professional always work with your pin it will really help you at least it will keep everything in place for you so at my waistline I will do that my hip line too I will pin and at the hem part I will also pin so I will sew it by that one inch that I took so I am done sewing that did you see it so it's very simple I'm done sewing it with my one inch seam allowance and this is how it look like did you see it so i will sew the shoulder with the half inch seam allowance i will sew my I'll join the shoulder with the half inch seam allowance so i've done that and i have also sewed the lining the same way i sewed my fabric so the next step now is to use your lining to turn the damp part of your fabric the right side face, uh, facing each other the right side of the lining facing the right side of the fabric then you sew the damp parts together so for my belt i have uh, five inches in wing width then I have 72 inches though the the fabric was not really long so I have to join two fabric together to get that length of 72 inches you can make use of any length that you want but I wanted the, the belt to be at least to be more than two times uh, my um, two times my waist so that is what I have so I will join them together 
like this then I will fold it into two and sew it all around or sew it but before I do that let me give it that shape at the hemming part you don't want it to look squared so I've given it this shape a curvy shape that you always see on your belt then I will leave a space in between for turning it in so it's as simple as ABC so that is what I will do now so guys for the belt I'm done sewing the belt so and I left a space for turning it in so I'll just turn it in from that point you can use any sharp object that you have to turn it to bring it out so that is what I'm doing I'm trying to turn it in just like this so it's actually simple and very easy to make simple kimono jackets and as you can see it's really simple So this is it when you're done if you have your pressing iron you can go and iron it at this point iron your so at this point that I opened it up I'm going to stitch it back I'm going to close it up from that point that I open it and same so I have sewed the down part did you see it I've actually sewed the down part. See, this is how the front side look like. Did you see it? So, so I will turn it over like this. Then I will use the lining to sew the neckline side. Note that this um you are still at the wrong side of the fabric. So I will use my pin to hold it down, just like this. Make sure the shoulder line of the line it matches together with the shoulder line of my fabric and also the armhole everything matches together so i'll use my pin and hold the 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 neck the neckline region i'll hold it like this so just like this then when I'm done pinning it, I'll go and sew it part. As you can see, I've used my lining to sew it and this is the wrong side of it. So before I turn it to the right side, I will need to notch it all around. This is the neckline. So I will need to notch it. You can top stitch if you want. If not, you can just notch it and turn it to the right side. So that is what I did here. So I'll be turning it to the right side for you to see how it will look like. I'm trying to show you. Did you see how it look? So this is the front part of our kimono jacket. As you can see, I've sewed the side. So this is how it's looking so what you can do now what you will do now is to give it a good press if you have your iron with you so you can give it a good press and this is the down part this is how the down part is looking so what i'll do is to knit in the armhole region and there are two ways you can knit in your armhole region the first one is to fold in your fabric and fold in the lining, then sew it all around. Just like this, you fold it in like this, then hold the two together and sew it all around. And the second way is by using your bias thread to knitting it all around. You can use a bias thread. So what I will do is to cut out a long stripe of my fabric then i will use it instead of um i will use it to knit in the armhole region instead of using a bias 
because I don't have any matching color of bias so I'll be using my fabric as a bias to knitting the armhole region so that's what I will be doing so when you have your bias with you you can make use of your bias instead of cutting out a fabric so that's what I'll be doing now so I'm trying to keep it in place so I have iron it so when this is how it's looking this is the back part this is how it's looking very neat and sweet so this is the front view and this is the back view can you see that so this is the armhole side i used the fabric to knit in the armhole side just like this and it's very neat so guys we've come to the end of the class so if you have any question please do well to drop it so this is me wearing the kimono jacket thanks for watching bye bye